With these tools, you can create a digital illustration and turn an image like this into something like this. Hi guys, this is Didi again and I welcome you to yet another designing video from Dexplorian. And for those who are new to this channel, this channel is all about designing in Photoshop and sharing the process with you. And along with that, we explore various tools, techniques and tips and tricks which will improve your workflow and level up your graphic design game. I've never been good at drawings but I'm very fond of them and I really admire the process of putting one's imagination onto the canvas or any other media. I can feel that sense of achievement and satisfaction after turning one's imagination into reality and the feeling is pure bliss. If I'm sounding relatable then I can say you are at the right place at the right time and I'm going to show you the whole step by step process and at the end you can turn any of your favorite image into a digital illustration. So let's start. We'll be creating the canvas. I'm going with my usual A4 size canvas and bring in the image we are going to use today. Place it at the center and make it a little smaller than the canvas. Regarding choosing the canvas, there's nothing to be particular about. You can use any image, but if you ask me, I would recommend you to use an image having a good balance of highlights and shadows. Too much of contrast might create some problem. So if possible, avoid that. And now we will be removing the background. I'll be using the ever dependable and the easiest of all selection tool the quick selection tool and then click on the select subject button to let Photoshop do its work and then we'll refine it later. I'll be skipping this part because I know most of you already know the drill but if you are new to Photoshop and are not well versed with the background removal process then I have a playlist just for you. You can watch that by clicking on the i button above or you can go to my channel page and look for the playlist. I'm sure that will help you out. And after going through the process this is the result. Now for this effect we need sharp edges, soft edges like the hairs in this image will not give the effect of an illustration. So what we'll do is draw some hairs ourselves. To do that we will create a new blank layer by clicking here and then take the brush tool, zoom in onto her face, make the brush smaller by pressing the left square bracket key, right click anywhere to open the brush settings and click the hard round pressure brush. And now I will switch from the mouse to my graphic tablet. For doing these kind of works, graphic tablets are always better. Don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you that you cannot do it with your mouse. Yes, you can, but you need to have a lot of practice to have a steady hand with the mouse to create the strokes like hairs. And that too, it will take a lot more time with the mouse. So if you're serious about graphic designing, then I would highly recommend you to get one for yourself. There are a wide variety of graphic tablets available in the market. Most of them work the same, so you don't need to break your bank to get one. The expensive ones are for professional illustrators and graphic designers, and I don't think we need one of those at the starting. Even my one is also not very expensive. Coming back, we'll pick the color from the hairs itself. For that, with the brush tool active, we'll hold the Alt or Option key and the cursor will turn into an eyedropper and then we click at the point. It will basically take the color from that pixel and make it our foreground color and now we'll make some strokes like this. Another thing I forgot to mention, the brush I selected earlier will not work the same with the mouse because it is pressure sensitive. Mouse is not a pressure sensitive device. It will work like a normal brush, but graphic tablets are pressure sensitive and you can manipulate the effect of the brush with the amount of pressure. Let me quickly finish it up. If you are uncomfortable making vertical strokes like me, then you can rotate the canvas by pressing and holding the R key and click and drag with the mouse to rotate. And when you are done, again press and hold the R key and then click on reset view here. I am done. Now I will be adding a border or outline around our subject and since the background of our image was darker than our subject, this trick will work. If the background in your image is lighter, then it might not work. We will activate the selection of the subject by holding the controller command key and clicking on the layer mask and go to the select menu, then modify and then click on expand. We will expand the selection by 5 pixels. We'll also make the selection a bit smooth and for that again go to select, modify and this time click on smooth. 15 is way higher, let's make it 10. Now we'll select the layer mask again and take the brush tool, change the foreground color to white by pressing the X key and paint along the edges to bring back the background. 
will leave out the hair areas and do it only along the body. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. I will do some refinements here and there. And after finishing up, we will select both the layers and convert them into a smart object and we are gonna rename it as subject. Now we are ready to apply the effect. We will start off by making a duplicate of the subject layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And then we will add a hue and saturation adjustment layer on top of the subject layers and bring the saturation all the way down. It will turn our image into a black and white. Then we select the subject copy layer and press Ctrl or Command I to invert it and then change its blend mode to color dodge. Everything will turn white. Then we go to filter then blur and click on Gaussian blur. Our sketch is starting to show up. We'll adjust this blur radius slider to get the desired effect. We'll do this in two parts. First we'll be focusing only on the body and adjust the sliders accordingly. 12 will be fine so I'll stop here and click OK. Then we'll add a levels adjustment layer and adjust it to give it a little contrast so that the lines appear darker. There's nothing fixed here. Every image have different settings so don't hesitate to practice your will. I will adjust it a little more. Now we'll select all these layers by holding the shift key and clicking on the topmost and the bottommost layer and press Ctrl or Command G to group them together and rename the group as subject body. We'll again make a duplicate of this group. It will be subject face because in this we will be focusing on the face and do the adjustments. Expand the group and double click here on the Gaussian blur and adjust the sliders to a higher number. We can also adjust the levels for bringing some contrast. This is okay for me. Then we'll add a layer mask to the subject face group and take the brush tool. Make the brush bigger by pressing the right square bracket key. Change the foreground color to black and we'll paint to hide the body area. For this neck area, we'll take the soft round brush and make the brush smaller. Did you see this shadow like casting around the hair areas? We have to remove that and for that we will expand the group and then activate the selection of the subject. Press Ctrl or Command Shift and I to invert the selection. Why? Because we want to paint on the outside area of the selection and use the brush tool to mask these castings. There are some more castings around the body also and we will remove them by first adding a layer mask to the subject body group and repeating the same process. Our sketch is ready and in the next step we are gonna enhance it to make it look like an illustration. Before moving on if you are enjoying and finding this video helpful then give it a thumbs up by clicking on the like button and if you are interested in similar kind of contents then subscribe to the channel and do not forget to press the bell icon so that you do not miss out on any of my videos whenever I post them. Now we'll press both these layers and press command option shift plus E if you are on Mac. For Windows, press Control alt shift and E and it will merge the layers into a single separate new layer. We'll only keep the visibility of the new layer turned on for the time being and convert it into a smart object. We'll now be applying a filter to it so we go to filter and click on filter gallery and then in the artistic folder we'll click on the cutout filter. This will simplify the edges. We got three sliders here to control the effect and we have to adjust them one by one. First is the number of levels and it determines the amount of details. Less are the number, less will be the details and vice versa. Once again we will be doing this in two parts, one for the body and another for the face and hairs. This is for the body. I think five will be good. Next is the edge simplicity and this will basically determine the shape of the edges. If you want it detailed, keep it at lower number and if you want it simple and sharp, set it high. I will keep it at 6. And lastly, edge fidelity is all about the jaggedness of the edges. I usually keep it unchanged. We'll hit OK. We are done with the body. We'll turn back on the visibility of the other two layers and select the layer 1 and press Ctrl or Command J 
to make a copy and double click here on the filter gallery of the new copied layer and adjust these sliders again to add little more details on the face and hairs. We'll collapse the filters and rename the layers to avoid any confusions. Then we'll add a layer mask to the cutout face layer and take the brush tool again and mask out the body areas to reveal the body areas of the layer beneath. If you feel like you can also do it in some parts of the face and hairs also. I want a little more details on the face so what I'll do is select both the cutout layers and press Ctrl or Command G to group them together and rename it as cutout and add a layer mask to it and again use the brush tool to reveal some more details from the layers beneath, especially the eyes and the lips. I'll do it in some more areas. And it's done. Let's add a background by adding a solid color adjustment layer and place it at the bottom. Double click on the icon of the color fill layer to open the color picker and pick the same white color from the subject. We again have some black castings around the subject. This is from the cutout group layer. We're gonna remove that by the same process as we did earlier. Our sketch is finished and in the next step we'll be adding some colors to it. But before that I'll be adding a levels adjustment layer on top and adjust it to give it a little more contrast and make the lines darker. Then we'll turn off the color fill layer and select all the other layers and merge them together into a new layer and now work on that. I'll rename it as subject full. We'll select all the other layers except the subject full and color fill layer and group them together, rename it and turn off the visibility and we'll keep it as backup in case we mess up something in the way. Now we'll start adding the colors. We'll add a new layer and activate the brush tool. Right click to open the brush settings and this time select a brush from the wet media brush folder and it's called Kyle's Ultimate Inking Thick and Thin. We're gonna adjust the brush size and select the color of our choice. I'll be selecting a shade of pink and start painting on her t-shirt. We'll change the blend mode of this layer to multiply and continue painting. You can be precise along the edges while painting or you can do what I am doing and take care of the edges by applying a layer mask later which I'll be doing. I'll adjust the brush color to a light shade of the pink and switch to a soft round brush. Adjust the flow to around 20% and paint on some areas. It will give an illusion of light coming from that direction. And now we'll clip this layer to the subject layer and all the outside extras are gone but we still have to work on these areas. So we'll add a layer mask to this layer and take the hard round brush and mask out the extras like this. It's done and we'll rename the layer as t-shirt and we're gonna follow the same process and add the colors to other areas. I'm done and now we'll select these three color layers and the subject full layer and again merge them into a new layer. Group the original layers, rename it as subject final and keep them as backup. We'll rename the new layer as well. Place the subject here and turn on the color fill layer. And now we're gonna add some more colors to enhance the visual appeal of the poster. Select the color fill layer and add a new layer above it. Take the brush tool again, open the brush settings and this time we're gonna use a custom brush which I have downloaded from brusheasy.com and it's called the free painter photoshop brushes. 
it's free and in that you will get 15 high res brushes and i have provided the download link in the description i will be selecting this one i will be using a shade of teal we can rotate the brush by clicking on the right or left arrow keys and i will be putting some stroke like this feel free to use it as you want we'll rename this layer as brush let's throw in some more colors we'll add another new layer on the very top and this time select another custom brush called the paint splash brush select the brush of your choice brush number four is fine with me i'm going to use the same color as on our pants so i'll hold the alter option key and click on the color and then just add a splash here you can even play with the blend modes if you want i will keep it normal i'll add few more splashes at the back also I'll stop here but you can go on till you are satisfied. And lastly we'll rename the layers and move on to the next step where we'll be adding some text. For that we'll select the topmost layer because we want to place our text at the top and then click here to activate the text tool and then click anywhere on the canvas to add the text. Type in our text. For this I'll be using a font called coffee soda. I downloaded it from fonttest.com. It's free and you can use it in any of your projects. Make it bigger and place it here. We'll double click here on the blank space of the text layer to open the layer styles dialog box and bring down the fill opacity to zero and then click on the drop shadow. Here we have all the settings and controls of the drop shadow. You can change the opacity if you want. All the sliders are pretty self-explanatory. I have added a little bit of noise to give it a natural look. Play around and experiment your way to achieve the desired results. This gap is too much, so I'll reduce the space between the characters. This is fine. I'm going to add some more text. In this, I will apply a stroke effect. And with this, our poster is complete. How is it? I hope you liked it. Please let me know in the comments down below. I have another video which is all about transforming any photo into a digital art using a very different technique. And in the next video, I'll show you how you can tweak today's technique and create a totally different effect. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.